Hey guys, I want to tell you how we use a Vexlar and how to really read it. I mean, I bought this, I paid $600 for this thing, went out on the ice, put it in the hole, and it was just nothing but chaos and red lines of weirdness. And I was like, what did I just pay $600 for? I can't make any sense of this. And I'm going to try to kind of give you a walkthrough on how to see this and read it once you get it and there's a learning curve and you got to put some practice in unless you're a kid a video gamer you'll have it in about two minutes but for the most part you're going to take a little bit of time to get used to it once you get used to it you can tell the species of fish by those little red lines how active they are all sorts of data and you can get more fish it is by far the single biggest factor between catching particularly panfish and lake trout, a suspended fish, between catching them and fishing all day. So it's worth the learning curve. All right, so here it is. Uh, this is an FL20 uh, Vexlar unit. There's other sonars, but Vexlar is definitely the lead in the game, uh, and I recommend their products. I beat my materials forever. I have had this, I bought this used, seven years ago and there's nothing wrong with it if anything wears out ooh, I almost did it myself right there if anything wears out it's the transducer head this is a little piece of magic in here electrical current goes in it's a piece of porcelain actually that sends out a pulse of electricity it hits bottom comes back and when that porcelain receives that vibration it turns it back into an electrical pulse and gives us the data that is amazing. There's a couple different kinds of these. The common, the most common, probably the most universal is the 12 degree. The degree is actually the width of your cone. Here's this little device right here. Uh, you know, there's a 19 degree, very wide, very exciting. There's a nine degree, narrower, and then there's the 12 degree. Uh, the nine degree pro actually you can adjust with the gain and widen out almost to 12. That may be the ultimate, a little bit more costly. The 12 is your standard, pretty good. The 20 degree, really only valuable if you're fishing very shallow waters and you're trying to get a wide cone. Out here, we're at 31 feet of water. I don't want a wide cone. I don't want to know the fish that's 17, 18 feet to my left or right because I'm not interacting with that fish and it's going to create a bunch of noise that's going to reduce the amount of data I have to work with to connect to the fish. So I got a 12 degree, and this is a FL20. The vital thing, if you're gonna buy one of these, if you're shopping, uh, FL8 and FL12s, amazing devices, one huge weakness. They only give you a top to bottom reading. I'm gonna demonstrate that in a little bit here. Uh, FL18, 20, 28, all those have a top to bottom reading and then a bottom six foot or bottom 12 foot expanded views. So you have, uh, you have basically half the screen is showing you in detail what's happening at the bottom six feet. Huge deal. When you're trying to connect with a crappie or a perch and centimeters matter, you don't want to have to deal with I mean, the whole game in a full depth on a deep water is just it's too small for for most people some people get used to it and they're very effective with it but by and large if you're going to invest in one of these i would recommend an 18 an fl 18 or above okay so that's this device uh on the back you got your battery readout keep that thing charged even charge it up in the summer if you have a trouble with your battery and i have had to have worn one battery out it's like 18 bucks you can find one i got an amazon li uh, link for those uh replacement batteries so there's an overall on off you want to obviously turn that to the on position i drill and i've done it here i drill two holes side by side the reason for that is if you fish out of the same hole that your vexlar uh, transducer is in it's very likely that a fish when you reel it up is going to wrap around that line and you're going to lose the fish and that makes it sad so i've got a hole here for a vexlar and i've got a hole here to fish with and the ideal, let's say this is the bottom of the ice. That'd be pretty thin ice, right? But let's say this is our ice. The ideal place is to hang it just below the surface of the ice. That's going to acquire the most amount of the vibrations and it's going to keep it out of the way of that uh, tangling situation with the fish. And this float allows you to actually adjust depending on the thickness of the ice. 
but a lot of times I just kind of let it play with the back here. Oh, important little factor. Uh, Vexlar is engineers absolutely brilliant at the technology. I would say they're uniquely poor at how they made this contraption to wrap up into itself. And almost always this thing ends up dangling somewhere. The more this dangles, the more the wiring breaks loose here and then you're out 100, 120 bucks. So when I wrap this thing up, or as I just unwrapped it, I actually kind of make a little bit of an origami thing going on with the wiring, clip this in the top, and then I slide this between the wires so that the weight of it is directly on the battery. That seems to be its happy place. If you just let this thing dangle, which it just, it wants to, it didn't really make a way that it wouldn't. If you let that dangle forever, you're gonna weaken that and you're gonna have to get a new deucer more often. So, we got this thing in the hole, we got it in the on position, we turn it on, and usually the first thing that comes at you is a bunch of chaos. There's different depths here. Uh, 20, 40, 60, 80. That's basically how many pulses it's gonna drop. Obviously, if it's 80 feet, it's gonna be dropping electricity differently to get the, in the information back. So you want to go whatever the next depth is past where you're at. We're actually at about 30 feet, so I'm going to set it at 40. Obviously, if I'm 0 to 20, I'm in that zone. Uh, and some random times, it, you'll get a funny read, and you'll do a little better often if you pop up to the next depth and come back down. So that's your first thing. I'm going to set this thing at 40 feet. Now I have basically two screens. This is the surface. There's almost always a little noise right at the surface. And then it's clear water right now all the way down to the bottom. But it looks a little interesting down there. It looks like there's something going on on the bottom. But if you only had a FL8, FL12, this is your game, basically. Which isn't that big of a deal. If you fish 6, 7, 10 feet of water all the time, that's perfectly fine. You're still going to have a very expanded situation. Most of the time I'm fishing panfish, I'm in 30 feet. So this is where I would be working my lure. Instead, because this has got the six-foot expanded view, this side of the screen has all the magic. We're going to show you that here in just a second. So, we set it at 40. I have it on full view A, Z, and six feet. So this is A to Z, top to bottom, and then this is six feet. I could, if I was lake trout fishing, I might set it just on uh, full view. So this would be top all the way to bottom and with lake trout I'm playing them up and down all the time and that would be my optimum. But here we're going to be in that A to Z situation. Then we have our gain. Now the gain uh, is, is basically how sensitive you want it to be. If, you pull, if I crank this all the way up, see all these lines just showed up? It's, probably, it's like reading variations in the density of the water now. Stuff is showing up it's going to be pulling more. So basically, as we drop our lure, we basically want to have that gain backed off to the least amount of gain, the weakest uh, as we possibly can make it, and still see our lure. Okay, now I'm going to get Hannah jigging, and I'm going to describe this while she's dropping. Okay. We are lifting this again, that top line. Lift it up a little bit, Hannah. That top line is Hannah's lure. We switched over a chain jig that had a, uh, a glow side on it because it is dark down there. Lift up a little bit. So that's her lure and it's reading it so... Oh, there comes a perch. Now rise slowly and watch your rod tip. A perch is taking a look at that bait right now. And this, this is the moment. Now you want to change your attention to your rod tip. There it is. Oh, you missed the bite. Okay, we got him activated. Beautiful. Lift up a smidgen. This is Hannah. This is that perch. Is it going to bite again? Oh, yeah! <laughs> now, could you have caught that without the Vexlar, Hannah? Nice. Ah, uh, he's not a keeper. That's all right. But it showed the system and how it works. And that kind of... And look, there's two more waiting below there. And also, right. it's rare for them to come up all the way to here. It is rare. <laughs> but on different days... Can you hold this a second? Yeah. On different days... The fish are willing to go to different heights. It's I call it the glass ceiling. I think it has a lot to do with the barometric pressure on that fish. Some days they'll only come up from the, like the first foot or so off bottom. Other days they'll come up four or five feet up. Okay, so this is 
I'm gonna turn the gain up a little bit more. This is the lure dropping fast, and look at these, their fish are already excited to see that lure on yeah. the bottom. So we're gonna bounce that. Again, this is, it's reading, it. ooh, there, the bottom part is the chain of that chain jig, and there is at least three fish down below. And I'm actually, I'm tempting them. I'm staying a little out of their comfort zone and forcing them to come to me to a point uh, to really see if I can get them to, if you stuff it right in their face, which some days you have to do. Uh, oh, there's one right there. I just, I, uh, this is me. This is a perch coming in to say hello. And hello is all you say, but I got another one following. He's coming up and down like a yo-yo. And we've got another guy over here. Uh, so some days I'm only gonna fi I'm only gonna lift maybe this high off bottom. Other days I'm gonna be fishing like four feet off bottom. This guy today is kind of a window shopping day, which I expected it would be. But again, even on these slow bite days, you can coax a bite. Here comes one. Here comes one right there. You can coax a bite better. Now I've got to stop looking at that and look at my rod tip. Is it still on, Hannah? Is it still yeah. investigating? Because that rod... Okay, I'm lifting him. I'm lifting him out of his happy zone. And he is strongly considering biting, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he wants to bite. He does want well, to he's bite. he's still following you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, so I... Oh, now he's starting... Oh, no. So as he gets redder, that actually means he's not getting bigger. He's getting closer to the dead center of the cone. We're going to explain that. Here comes that fish. The fish is coming into the screen. As soon as it hits the far edge of the cone, right there, you're going to see some tiny little green blips. Little skinny bl green blips. So we're going to start wiggling that jig around just a little bit. That's going to draw that fish in a little bit more, usually slightly below it. And it's going to, oh, now look, its nose just hit into that orange line. That's close to the center of the cone. Now you're going to see some green blips mixed with some orange blips. Then we're going to jig it a little bit more and we're going to start that slow lift of doom. And now he's coming up underneath it. Usually they like to come up underneath their bait. That's where their eyeball and their nose is right on top of their head. So they want to come just underneath it. And now that thing's going to turn red as I lift that jig away. When I see that turn red, that means that fish is either about to bite or has just bitten. And I turn my eyes up onto the jig pole tip. I watch for that little bit of a bounce, and I set the hook and bring him on up. Can't fit up the hole, he's a giant perch that I made. <laughs> nice work. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Crappy. <laughs> oh, my. All right. So, That's the keeper, right? that is awesome, is what that is. <laughs> oh, uh, I was like, oh, this is huge. This, yeah. This is big, this is big. And I'm like, oh, this is So, Mark's using the Vexlar. And uh, right next door, the neat thing is the Vexlar doesn't really interfere. I'm going to shut the Vexlar off for just a second. I got this Garmin. Uh, see, there's, there's not much of a difference in noise uh, with this Garmin Striker. You know, this is a lot cheaper device, and it still can get the job done, particularly in deeper and shallower water. 30 feet, this is a bit much. That is my jig. Mark, you want to try jigging on this? We're going to do a little bit of a sample. See, it doesn't have the, the zoom screen like the Vexar 20 does, the FL20 does, but you can still get it done. Uh, so now you hit bottom, now lift up slowly, Mark. There he is lifting up slowly, and there comes a fish. Maybe that's another crappie. Oh, oh, so there it is coming. There's two fish after you now. I feel it. You feel it? If you feel it, hit him. Yeah, you feel I don't him? think he's got it. Oh, there's, okay, you got two of them chasing. There we go. You got, got him, one. you got, got him. One. All right, now this is, a, this is a $150 fish, not an $800 fish. <laughs> that's oh. a difference. Oh, that's oh. a good perch. Nice. Another perch. So you can definitely do it with the striker, but you'll catch more crappies apparently on the vex slot. <laughs> awesome. To your jig. So here's your jig, here comes the bass. 
There's your jig. Oop, there he is. He's coming in, and you can tell he's red. Now, what Lydia needs to be careful not to do is be desperate and zoom down to the fish because fish are not used to their food swimming into their mouth and it spooks them off a little bit. Fish are accustomed to the bait going away from them. So the trick, the, the thing that Vexlar allows you to do that call, triggers so many bites that wouldn't be a bite is it allows you to play the individual fish and pull away from their face. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so here we go. This guy comes in. Here's Here's Lydia's jig. Here comes that bass. And oh, he's coming green and he's coming up. Lydia's jigging a little bit. He's getting closer, he's getting closer. Oh, now all of a sudden the two colors have collided. The red of the fish, the fish came in slowly. The red of that fish came into the line where that jig is and red and red connected. At this point, this is when, as soon as you see that come on to red to red, that's the moment when you want to turn your eyes off the Vexlar and onto your rod tip and still rise. I'm not saying rise three inches. I'm saying rise three eighths of an inch, rise an inch and a half, very slowly, just a perfect little wiggle. And that is what makes the magic. But I really think that this needs to be seen. The, the coloration as it comes in and the chase and not to be desperate, don't go chasing after them. You gotta pull slowly away from them. And as soon as red turns to red, set the hook and reel it in. All right, so if you're interested in a Vexlar, I'll have some links of, uh, of the FL 18s, 20s and above, everything there. Also, I have a link for these garments. I think these are now about $200. I'll get the link in there. And there's also a couple other brands that even have the Zoom in the $300 range. I'll get a link in that. My buddy has one that I didn't get video of, but it does a really good job and it keeps you under a $300 range. And I have also the link for these batteries. Pretty handy there. Please check out, if this was helpful, uh, check out, we have a lot more helpful underwater camera videos of jigging. We've got a nasty cat that likes to eat fish. It's a catfish. <laughs> it's brand new. And uh, we've got a lot of videos. We've got camping videos. We've got a lot on the channel. Please also press the uh, like button and subscribe if you're interested in these kind of videos. Thank you so much for watching. Fish Looks like a cat, a cat, a catfish. <laughs>